Taking a drive into Tribeca today. Um, been a bit of an event on relating to. Um, it's like a kids. I don't know what you call it. It's, it's, the kids have come from all the different schools in the area. It's a bit of a convention. I think it is called the Kids Convention or something. So April's got along because Zoe's got a presentation to do. But basically, everyone talks about what their school does, etc., etc. Um, but anyway, I just want to talk about doing stuff that you want to do. Because this is one of the critical things that people have in their lives, which is often pushed to one side because of others, because of circumstance, because of events, because life is a continuous changing, um, evolving environment, situation, whatever you want to call it. <coughs> but the, the key element here is doing what you want to achieve or what you want to do. Because often you may do stuff you don't want to do to get something you want to achieve. Uh, an example of that is Say you wanted to buy a house for the first time, you may work uh, your day job, then go and do a part-time evening job or weekend job that normally you wouldn't do, but quite simply you're pushing the money together so that you can afford the deposit. That's an example. Uh, but <coughs> the point is, don't let things stop you reaching your full potential. It doesn't matter what people say, what people um, think about this or do that. It really doesn't matter. And I, I tried to make a point of this with somebody that was constantly complaining about everything I'm doing um, because they got their nose out of joint over something, which I don't even know what their problem was. But anyway, the, the point being is you will always have people that are critical over anything you're doing. Because people are just like that. That's, some people spend their life going through it, moaning about everything. But the point I was making to them, which they didn't grasp, was the fact is when you actually prove these things work or whatever, you don't get them go, oh, you know what, I was wrong, you were right, you've actually shown it works and proven it and everything else. Oh, you know, I wish I hadn't talked that rubbish. They don't do that. They never will. What they do is they just disappear. They don't, you know, they, they would never go back on their word, that's for sure. They would never go and say, you know what, uh, sorry, go back on their word. They would never actually turn around and say that they were wrong. So don't let these sort of things rule your life because they're simply not important. What's important is doing the stuff you want to do and want to achieve and want to get out of life. Right now, things are looking almost there in Spain to where we need to be. Um, I haven't really updated too much on it because there's a lot of stuff going on this month. But there, there was a few hiccups yesterday which all panned out nicely. Uh, the first thing was, I have this meeting for the residency um, this month, but I wanted to make sure my paperwork was correct. Um, so I went to the foreigner's office yesterday uh, because one of the queries I've got is over social security because I'm paying it, but I need to know that Spain recognised I'm paying it from the UK. Um, but currently, their system's a little bit confused on that, but they recognise that I'm paying it as self-employed in Spain, even though my tax is actually not from Spain, my tax is from the UK. So, I'm hoping they don't get confused in, in the actual main meeting over the fact that my social security is paid twice at the minute, because the, Spain doesn't recognise the, the payment from the UK. The UK says, well, you tell me what Spain wants and we'll transfer your social security from the UK to Spain. But Spain's going, yeah, but you're already paying it from your self-employment, you don't need to do it. And I'm like, well, 
do I cancel it in the UK? How do I cancel Social Security in the UK? Because I'm, I'm tempted to just leave it because they, I have a pension with the um, system in the UK. I've already got nearly 30 years into that. Once it hits, I think 34 years or 35 years. Um, I don't have to see, I have to pay anything more into that system because I've already reached the maximum that it requires to get a full um, government pension. But anyway, so I went and seen the woman about it and she was like, okay, no problem. Uh, yeah, and she said, there's a certificate, I'll give you a certificate, which is basically from the social security. It says, yeah, Matt pays regularly, he pays in the funds, blah, blah, blah. No problem, tick in the box. Next one was April and the kids uh, medical cards were cancelled. Um, basically, they were saying, well, I need, uh, they should already be resident now. Because obviously, don't take into account that the problems have been dealing with their bureaucracy. But um, they said, well, you know, they're expired. You can't have a new one. So I went and spoke nicely to the woman that was doing this other paperwork. And she's like, well, since you've got a meeting for your residency at the end of this month anyway, if you had your padron with you, which is the electoral roll certificate, um, I would do it for you. So I'm like, okay, well, I just happen to have it because I'm going there next. It says, oh, the, it's expired. I said, no, no, there's four days left on there. She was, she was a bit, oh, well, I shouldn't really do this because it's already, it's too, the date's too close. I said, yeah, but I'm going there now. I can actually bring you one of these. Um, later today or whatever so she gave she renewed theirs because mine's fine because I pay into the system directly I actually have a plastic card with no expiry date but April and the kids there is expires every three months um, which is the pay but it's not as if I'm not paying into the system I, if anything I don't use medical care whatsoever myself I'm not, even in the UK I very rarely go to the doctors I think I've been twice in as many decades. Um, but anyway, so she done that for us. But then, going to the Padron office, because they sent a letter out saying, well, hang on a minute, you guys have been here two years now, you're coming up two years, you should be residents now. Um, we're not gonna give you a new Padron. And in fact, well, you, you've gotta come here before the, the um, first week of December, I think it was, or second week of December. Um, because we want to know why you're still in Spain, uh, but haven't actually got status here. So going in there expecting to have some issues um, over this, but I took the documents from the social security stuff I had with me, plus I had a printout of my appointment with Foreigners Office, the Immigration. Um, so when I went in there, prepared, the first thing they're looking at is the three letters that says April, the kid, you know, one for each child. They send these letters out individually to say why are you still in Spain, what are they, what, you know, whether they want to know what's going on. Um, they put them to one side, but as soon as they seen that I have an appointment for Residencia, they then seen another, the social security forms, which everything's paid and da da da. They just turn around and say, okay, we'll just renew that for you. They said, but as soon as you've been for the residentia, um, come back in because we need to update your forms because obviously I'm no longer a temporary resident, but a permanent resident or full-time resident, whatever you want to call it. Um, <coughs> so that's pretty much it. They then give me the Padron. Now, because the Padron's important, because when I have to go to this meeting on the at the end of the month for my... Uh, residency, they turn around and go, you know, Matt, you, we need to know where you're living. Uh, where's your electoral roll document? And that's where that's come from. Um, along with your tenancy agreements, which is another thing I've sorted out as well. Uh, the whole point of this is you have this process of stuff constantly going on in Spain to get where you need to be. Now, I will say, once you become resident, a lot of these problems stop 
because once I'm recognising the system, like now I have a plastic social security card, unless the government actually change their system somehow, uh, which they do from time to time to weed out those exploiting and abusing it, um, my, I won't need to get a new medical card, that'll be it. I'll also have my residency card, which will become almost permanent. Um, all my documents don't expire regularly, all that sort of fizzles away. Um, but we're almost there, and I'm quite happy. You know, this is coming up to Christmas now. Uh, work's still busy. So everything is like dropping into place. And, and this is the thing. You know, people like to see the negative star, you know, they go, oh yeah, but the reason I put my negative and positive stuff in the same pot is because it's real. When you see stuff online, I know somebody was mentioning the other day on about a YouTube channel that disappeared, you know, the person just disappeared. A lot of that happens because their life disappeared, because their whole life was based on what was going on. Oh, we've got a new business, our business is doing great, we've got a restaurant, we've got this, um, I've just got married, I've got, you know, living the life, blah, blah, blah. And then they find out the wife's cheating or something else, so, and they're, or the restaurant went bankrupt, or the, some, you know, or the money was stolen, whatever. They then just go, YouTube channel, delete, or they just stop posting stuff, whatever. Myself, I will still carry on because quite simply, I like to show the ups and the downsides because I find that most of the stuff you see on TV or whatever these days, which is sadly becoming a main source of uh, information, um, in the sense that people don't read as much books as they should um, and research things themselves. Um, the problem is that there's too much positive media or the wrong type of negative media. What I mean by the wrong type of negative media is stuff like the Daily Mail that just likes ripping into people um, and a lot of it isn't even true. Uh, the right type of negative media is actually turned around and showing the pitfalls and problems with things so that people are aware of them so they can make sure it doesn't happen to them. That's the positive out of the negative. Um, there isn't enough going on about that stuff. There isn't enough of that stuff out there that actually says, you know what, this is reality. Not reality TV, because we all know how real that stuff is, um, but the real realities. You know, it, it's not fictitious. It's not made purely for an audience. It's, it's made because it's people's real lives. And yes, I don't like reality TV, and I know this sort of YouTube stuff is a bit of reality TV in some ways, but at the same time, I think it's from a different perspective from many things. But things are coming together. Things are actually getting there. And I have to say, the, the flu is almost gone. I know I was just talking to a friend of mine, Steve Black, um, in the UK today, and he said, well, it sounds like you've got the same cough I have, and he said, I'm now on week four. I'm just thinking, oh, great, because I, I thought I'd just about got over this, because um, obviously I'm in, in week two. But after spending Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in bed, because I was really rough, um, I'm actually recovering. I just have that chest feeling, you know, where you've got that feeling like it's sort of empty or something. <coughs> but we're getting there we're getting there and that's the important thing anyway I'm almost at my destination um, enjoy the rest of the week